is the New South Wales Transport Act. The New South Wales government, and this, remember this is the New South Wales government, not the federal government that we were hearing about before, um, with, the, uh, with the help out. The New South Wales government has put out a lot of information on how to go on trips. And it's very handy, like you might have one at one time, gone and got a timetable, and then if you're going on a long trip, you might have to get another timetable, and then another, and then you have to sort of fit them together, yes, there's this much weight between uh, catching the bus, catching the train, and then catching the other bus, and then getting the ferry or the other bus. And some people in the areas where they live, when I've gone and spoken to clubs about this, they have very complex uh, systems. <coughs> Like I know when I went down to Shoalhaven Heads, for a certain bus, and a lot of private bus companies, for a certain bus you had to ring them, it said in the, in the app that you had to ring them up an hour before you were going and tell them that you were going to be there at the, at the bottom club and they would pick you up. Otherwise, if you didn't ring them ahead of time, they might not go to the bottom club to get anybody. So you had to organise things like that, or there's other places where um, the buses are private buses and you don't have, they don't have open card readers. But they go, and the trains have stopped, they go from station to station. So you go into the station, tap on, wait at the bus stop, the bus takes you to the next station, you get out, you tap, you tap off at the station. You, because there's no trains running at that time of night. Little clever things like that, and then all that information's in there. Now, by the way, I thought I'd put this on the front. This is one of the new metro trains that don't really exist. <laughs> and, uh, but I thought it looked pretty cool. And these, these metro trains, and they'll, they'll be on the Opal app. In fact, some of this is sort of starting to go on there. It's such a good train that, that uh, there's all these seats left. And people just stand up for the fun of it. Like, they, don't, they, don't even, they don't even like sitting down because that's too boring. And notice the windows are dark because a lot of this goes underground, doesn't it? Comes all the way from <coughs> uh, up at uh, Rouse Hill and then goes to underground at Castle Hill and then it goes under the harbour and it goes under the city and there's a stop at Pitt Street and then it comes out and it goes over to uh, Bankstown eventually. So I just, just sort of throw that in. Now these are the apps that I'd be talking about in a full Thing. I want to talk about the Transport for New South Wales website because it's very much like the other two apps. They all look a bit the same, really. This particular uh, session, now in your bag, you have a plastic bag in there, like this, a plastic cover, and there's two things in there. One is, one is your a set of notes that go for the full lesson of this. So you, so you think, here, yeah, I didn't understand this, I won't remember anything. It's all in there, okay, how to do this. And so I'm condensing these six and a half pages down to a short time. There's also in here, because we're doing this on behalf of seniors card, who are running the text out of seniors, there's a participant survey. And it would be nice if you filled that out. You don't have to fill it out. You can, all the things are basically tick the boxes. So it won't take you too long. And uh, you can be as critical as you like, or you can be as nice as you like, or somewhere in between. Now, the New South Wales Transport website, we'll look at that first, because I can do that on the computer. <clears throat> the New South Wales Transport website can be looked at on your phone, tablet and on your, um, <clears throat> on the internet, just on an ordinary computer. The trouble is lugging the computer along on your trip to follow how you're going with the trip is a bit of a nuisance. You'd have to like photograph it or something. The Apple Card is a proper portable app. It's very similar, but it's portable. I wouldn't be doing that with a group of people unless we had some foreknowledge because to use the Apple Card app, you have to have a login. Because the, even though the, the transport website doesn't really know who's looking at this, they know the computer, but they don't know who's looking at it. The Opal card, card app needs to know who it is, and then next time you look at it, your trips will be on there. And if you log in that local, that local card app 
on a, say, tablet or another phone that you've got, all the trips that you've planned there before will be there because it knows who you are. And because it knows who you are, it can also help you to top up your Opal card rather than mining up up the movies to top it up. And you can do all those other settings like that. And move it so and out created overseas. I won't talk much about that, but I, the material included this because it does overseas, even though it does local ones, it also is something like 2,000 2, cities and towns over the world where people have, it's crowdsourced, you know, and people that go on trips send the information in to move it so that there is a, an information system. Whereas the New South Wales government gives out to these other apps, not just Opal, but other apps, like if you use Trippier and things like that, gives out to those, those ones the transport information, so they've got the same information. But not so in some countries, they don't have such an organised system, so it takes local people to uh, start writing down what they've done on their trips, what the, where the buses go, all that sort of thing. And, uh, okay, Transport for New South Wales website. And, uh, where's the nice it is? Just have a look at a couple of things on here. The local one in there. There we go. Quite popular, okay? I don't always work with it, but I've it a few times. And notice this little section down the side here. I'm going to make this fill up the whole screen. Now this, if you had this on your phone, if you, all you would see with that little left-hand column. But you could see the map as well if you uh, just like flip it across to the other side. So I mean, let's, let's go on a trip to my current location. Most trips start there. My current location, click there, and go to click it again, my current location. So I'm going to go from here to where? I'll go from here to Narrowman. So I've been talking to people from there. If I, um, if I knew an exact address in Narrabeen, then I could put that in there. It would give me a more closer bus trip to Narrabeen. But it will just give me a general one, like most locations. I guess that's the post office. Narrabeen. And it's working on it. It's thinking about it. And I'll Go, I'm going to go here. And it wants to know your location. I don't know why, it would, well, I suppose it needs to know your current location, doesn't it? If you say it like that, then I'll allow that. And it searches through its information and it gives you these trips from now. So in three minutes, I've got to go down the, down the street 14 minutes. Was this 14 minute walk? I don't think I'll make it. But anyway, <laughs> Uh, I, well, I know I'm going to start in three minutes to walk 14 minutes to catch that bus. There's the bus, and then I'm going to walk another three minutes when I get there to get to the Narrabeen post office. And then it's got a bit more information here. If I click it, it will tell me uh, this is where it knows I'm in somewhere near Druid Street, and walk 14 minutes. And if I don't know which way to walk, it will say all these little instructions. Walk along there, walk along so many, one minute, one minute down Druid Street, heading east, and two minutes on Kent Street, and so you don't get lost. And with the with the with the uh, bus, then you're at Whitman Station carrying the street and you can get on the bus, wait at stand B, stop number. I didn't realise until I was doing this that all, all bus stops have a number. So this bit up the top here that says departures, it asks you for your stop number. So if you if you want to do it that way. That and is your current location, surely. Yeah. Not, not really. You're starting from somewhere else. This is the problem if you are in the city. Because if it if it can't get your proper location, like it's pretty hopeless for uh, GPS and everything to see the satellites. I don't know if you drive around the city 
and you'll get someone who just doesn't know where you are until you get out in the open and it can see a few of the satellites in the sky. It's got to have line of sight. But it can use other things. Uh, this is not, see this is on a computer, so it doesn't have proper GPS and it doesn't have, uh, it's not connected to the phone towers and things like that. If you've got a phone, then it's going to be able to, to use the, the phone towers and repeaters and that to triangulate your location. And it's also, they also, um, some of the shops have things that they call beacons that are Bluetooth. And it can use Bluetooth as well. well so it will use any network it can find if you're using your phone. This is a computer. It's doing your best. Stuart Street's not really that close to here. But I, I thought I'd just ignore it. <laughs> uh, and then you get the, get the bus. And it says Opal only service like most of them are. See how it's got a little Opal card in here that's black? If you, and it says the trips cost $4.71, or well, for us seniors, blow that. <laughs> if I, could, I, I was surprised when I got it. I got a gold local card, how much money it was saving. <laughs> so you click that little picture of the card, and you put the good one in. Yeah. And done. Now it's only $2.35, and it won't go much more than that during the day. So I, I can get directions from other things too. Now, there's all these trips going for the rest of the day and I can pick more and more, or I can even up the top, instead of choosing leaving now, I can say when I want to leave. Or I can say when I want to arrive, which is often more to the point, uh, when I want to arrive. So you can have another time, I can choose a time when I'm leaving, or a time when I want to arrive and put it in here. Now, one thing you, should, you could do too, uh, let's make that go again. Oh. One thing you could do is see how this, uh, you can click this one now to narrow in as a favourite, and all that does is put it at the top. Because it, it gets a whole list of these things, the trips you've done before, and it'll make sure that that one's at the top. And there's a few options here I can choose as well options and if I don't particularly like well kind of puts a ticket in the school bus because we don't want to go in there we're going to stay out of the school bus I know if we run lessons at Asker uh, somewhere between 10 and, 10 and uh, maybe 2 is the best time to have it because nobody wants to get on the school bus to go back so you could take that if you're keen notice there's C for coaches for some of the country areas, they're going to use coaches rather than just ordinary buses. Light rail, ferry, train, bus. <coughs> so if you don't, if you, if you want to go by ferry to Narrabeen, look here, you could just say ferry and, ferry and bus, or it will pick the most efficient one. So you can change it. If some things you don't like, and it says exclude local pay, I think this, this one's particularly interesting. Walk speed. You know, some of telling you're walking. Yeah. So you can choose if you're a slow walker, it will change the times so that you can uh, get it, you know. You're not rushing at all. Oh, she's only got a minute to go. And I've still got 100 minutes. Um, so you can choose that. And this trip preferences, I think, is good. It always chooses the fastest trip, like your GPS and car quickest one, but it's not always the most convenient. You turn a lot of corners and stuff like that. I wish it had things like this. Fewest changes, you might like getting out of the bus and going to another bus. Even though that's the good way, you might want to stay on the long bus. Or you might want to get change trains so often and things like that. Or ones with the least walking. I'm sure that's important to a lot of people. You can change to that. And you could also choose down the bottom walk up to 20 minutes. So if, you, if you're a good walker and you're prepared to walk more, you might be able to get on the bus at a, at a better stop. Some, I know another thing when I went recently went to the Kim Company as well, I looked at their bus route, and there's really only one bus route, it's a big loop. And that bus route has 90, 98 stops. <laughs> Fortunately, 
you know, I don't think anybody's waiting at every stop or gets off at every stop. Otherwise, it would be a hugely, hugely long trip. But there's a, you know, there's a lot of possible stops on the way. So you could say, oh, I'm prepared to get a taxi or drive instead of walking. Make sure when you do that, you click that down button at the top, otherwise you don't know. If you want to change it. And it shows you here the bus route. This is a pretty efficient bus. This one, this B-line bus, doesn't have all those, those stops, does it? From here, and you go all the way. Now you can see, you can do a close-up on this. Now if you're using this app, it doesn't like you, if you're using it on the phone, it doesn't like this pinch and spread business. Use these. Buttons down the bottom to do that. You'll send it haywire if you don't. You don't do that. So, this is how this works, and you can also choose here at the top. If you're coming back, you can go and choose that little backwards, you know, the backwards trip, the same one, the same trip backwards. It doesn't change the trip, it just changes the time basically, as much as anything else. But it seems like the bus, you know, has two buses at the Near the heat now. Not as efficient going the other way. So that's that's this that's this uh, uh, which looks very much like the Opal Card app. Very much like it. If you use the Opal Card app, but you'll need a, a login for that. Now I was talking to a person the other night, uh, last night, named Judy. If you've ever heard of her. <laughs> And uh, she said, well, what, about, what about if I want to look at the old type of bus timetable? So if I go to the home button here, and you go down, and you can see the uh, route information, look up the timetable, and if you know the name of a, a bus, a bus, what's the, what's the bus route? 105. What was that, Alan? 185. 185. 185. Enter. Got a few choices here. 185. Right above the ring of all, that one. Okay, you choose that one. And you get a map of it. And you can also see PDF timetable. Alright? Print this out. Now, why should you waste your ink on on the government's job? Well, they don't want to waste their ink and paper, but it it is a place you can look at the overview if you want. And sometimes these things are hard to come by. We're going to get one. Uh, you know, have it mailed you or find a go to search New South Wales. I might print you out one, I guess. And uh, so that's that's the whole overview of that. If you want to, if you want to use that, oh, I'll just go back to this. I'll just click out of that. All right, next one of these. Now the Opal Card website, even though I can't go to you to show you the Opal Card one. So you can go there, you can go to get an Opal card and you can register. Uh, how many people here out of the people that have got Opal cards have registered their Opal card? Yeah, you can, you can stand. But, so you can get an Opal card there. It's a bit much more efficient now because it's based on whether you've got a seniors card. You can get the, you can get the, the gold. Um, and if I go to the Opal card one, the registration is pretty easy. They've got a lot in the middle here. This opal, opal.com.au. And you can activate your card if you've already got one. Register your card to protect your balance. That's a one reason to register. If you lose it, they can transfer whatever money you've got in to a new one and cancel your old one and that sort of thing. Top up your card. And then any of these questions, if you, if you ask them, they're going to have to know your number. And of course, they, you're going to have to get a payment system to work. Uh, give them your credit card or whatever like that. 
that might be worth some people just to do the line up thing. Transaction history, existing medical card and the PLS, and all that sort of thing. So you report it lost or stolen, stop it from being used by others. And these are all on that, that app. And Now these the Apple Card app you can get. There is an Apple Card site, but that you can go to you can go to Google Play or the App Store. The great thing about it is exactly the same on Android as it is on on iPhone. So if you're a trainer in a club and want to teach people about this, you don't have that problem. And it works faster than that transport one. And it can find your location better. And it even like you can follow your bus along the little like that. And it saves your trips so you don't have to worry about that. If you were using the phone with that transport one and you flip to another app and flip back, it'll reload and then you could ask it to do it again. It takes your trip better and you can use it for top up. Who, who from here uses their and that uses the Apple Card app on their phone or, or tablet or whatever? Apple Card app? Who uh, has automatic top up? Yeah, I think that's the goal. It's, it's good to see um, older people using that because they've taken the risk. Okay, I'll give my payment method to get somebody. Because that holds a lot of people back in getting certain apps because they don't have a payment system set up to get any other app or something like that. The apps are actually free, but you do need to do those things. And I said about the movement and how you can contribute to the world's knowledge on this. It's like the Wikipedia of uh, Wikipedia of tra travel apps. Okay, I don't think we really need a question. I think it's time for lunch. Are we going to have a question? All right. Why don't people show up to you next year because they're provided by you? The information is provided by them, yeah. It's so much better. You don't have to I think, I, I, well, it's, if you want to um, tribute, I, in, that, in fact, that's the most common app that people say. That's the one I use. And that's one I use personally too. That's the one people use. It doesn't provide this you know, bus to ferry to as easily. 